Welcome to Empowered by Iron, hosted by Dr. Kristen Lander from Fiercely Fueled Nutrition Coaching and Mary Morton from Grad Gains, the online resource for your fitness needs. Together, we are Empowered by Iron. Welcome to Empowered by Iron. So this week we actually have a really special guest. Um, we have Kristen Pope. Kristen Pope, hey, how are you? Good, how are you guys? We're doing pretty well. So why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about you, for those who don't know anything about you, which I think is absurd, but <laughs> let's go ahead and give us a little background. Um, I am 27. I live in Atlanta, Georgia. I am a competitive Olympic weightlifter and now dabbling into the powerlifting world too. I own my own business coaching nutrition via flexible dieting and that keeps me really busy. <laughs> um, I'm married and I have two fur babies that are pit rescues. That's awesome. And so with your weightlifting, have you been doing this for like... 10 years, 5 years, like what's the, the time on that? Um, I got into it via CrossFit, which I <laughs> started out actually by teaching Les Mills classes right before that. Oh, so awesome. my journey has been, has been a little non-traditional, but yeah, I started <laughs> out <laughs> teaching Les Mills Body Attack, and then um, from there, a personal trainer at the Golds I worked out at started some quasi CrossFit style program there and I just really liked it right off the bat so I ended up joining a CrossFit gym a couple uh, weeks later and I did CrossFit for about nine months that was in 2013 and I had ankle surgery in that time which really sucked and mm. upon coming back from from ankle surgery, I decided that CrossFit is not that fun, <laughs> so I switched <laughs> over to weightlifting. <laughs> so weightlifting only, I've been doing about two years. That's awesome. And so, you know, this is kind of like, I guess, the dream for a lot of people who are really into fitness. Weightlifting is actually your full-time job. So can you tell us a little bit about, like, how you decided to make that huge leap? Yeah, uh, the first year I did weightlifting, I still worked. I coached gymnastics, and I finally stopped doing that because it was too hard on my body to be spotting all night after lifting all day. So I got a real big girl job <laughs> in a restaurant management company. So we moved downtown, and a few months after that, I was like, man, I just cannot keep up with all of this and try to be this superstar weightlifter is just not going to work so I just took the plunge and quit my job and dove head first into full-time athlete life which sounds glamorous but it's <laughs> got its challenges also I'm sure well in 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 that time frame too um, you started up your um, it's called barbells and bows uh, nutrition coaching for people who don't know and then in that time frame is that kind of when you got started with that yeah I was coaching a lot of my friends to begin with while I was still working and that's kind of how I got started. And then those friends had friends that wanted me to coach them and just started growing that way kind of by accident, honestly. And it just was eating up a lot of my time also. And that's how I got started. And now it it is a full-time job just with the hours that I decide to work. But it's still, <laughs> I work the same amount of hours as if I went into work every day. But you can work in your pajamas. Right, Yeah. <laughs> That's the dream. That's the dream, <laughs> definitely. So, Kristen, Empowered by Iron is really all about how um, women's everyday lives have been directly influenced by the barbell or just in the gym and training. So, how has lifting like changed your life um, physically, mentally, or even emotionally? Or yeah, has it? A big part. Yeah, it has definitely. A big part of why I started dedicating so much of my time to lifting was to better manage some anxiety problems I was having. Mm -hmm. And um, that really bothered me for probably 10 years. And yeah. it was just a new way to kind of release stress and 
more so have self-expression in a way where I felt like I was always kind of different and as soon as I found lifting it was like I had this culture I perfectly fit into and everyone around me had the same mindset so it's been a really good way for me to kind of find my place almost in life whereas before I was like couldn't really figure out not really where I fit in but just couldn't find my people and and lifting is just a lot of like-minded folks together and it's just been really great yeah, I can I can completely agree with that. I know for me throughout my high school, I'm I'm just graduated college, so you know, high school's still pretty big to me. Um <laughs> but like in in high school it was it was hard for me to find just like you said, like-minded people. And it's hard to explain to I call them normalers, but people who don't <laughs> weightlift <laughs> how like how this affects me and how why it's important. So that's pretty awesome that it helped you with that. I know for Kristen over here, it helped her a lot with those kinds of things. So it's it's pretty awesome to see how positive weightlifting has impacted our lives. Yeah. Well, and that's why we started this whole podcast is because Mary and I had similar stories and we're like, well, if we have these similar stories, like who else has these stories where they just really felt like they found themselves through weightlifting and all of the things that regular training brings and then also the community. So. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of how I was always growing up in gymnastics. I always had that group of people that had that huge passion, like we're all in for this one goal, and then when gymnastics was over, I that's what was missing in my life, and so I found it again with lifting. It's been really awesome. That's awesome. So the question, so you see a lot of um, weightlifters, and this is kind of, off topic, I suppose, but a lot of weightlifters have that background of gymnastics. Like, do you feel that that really gave you a huge competitive advantage? Um, Because I know gymnastics, you know, it requires a lot of strength where a lot of other sports don't necessarily require that, like basketball or soccer. Um, I think there's a lot of gymnasts in the sport because of the same reason I'm doing it. Like, they had that huge thing that shaped their life for so long and then it has to go away at some point gymnastics is not a sport you can do professionally and it's not something you can continue to do for a long time like you could do with weightlifting or powerlifting and so I think a lot of us just wanted to find that next thing to keep that going and more so than the strength from gymnastics I think it's more the discipline that sets you up for being good at weightlifting Um, like being ready to log the hours in the gym, being disciplined on your nutrition, getting enough sleep, not partying all the time, like, you're already molded to be that way from gymnastics and maybe some other sports, like team sports, you, you're you not always relying on that one person, like basketball you mentioned, like, you're just, you just do your part and it's not, win or loss doesn't lay on your shoulders only and I right. think gymnastics being such an individual sport, it's really comparable to lifting. I I had never thought of it that way. Yeah, so you came into the sport with, like, the habits that you needed to be successful already. Right, yeah. Yeah. Plus, plus I saw your gymnastics credentials, and you're a pretty good athlete. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Yeah, it's interesting because a lot of the gymnasts that do weightlifting, they were able to finish their career out through college, and then they got right into CrossFit, and... My journey was not like that. I had so many injuries. I stopped competing when I was 16 Mm -hmm. and just started coaching. So there was a big gap in my sports career where I actually got really skinny. (laughs) I I was really muscular gymnast, and then I got really skinny. I was like, I'm just going to run all the time. Oh, no. (laughs) I lost all of my muscles and then basically started over. So it's not like some of my friends (laughs) were already, like, totally jacked right when they started weightlifting. They're like, walk in and squat 250. That was not me. (laughs) All the running. I think it gets a lot of us just like that. Because that's what I did a lot. When I first got into fitness, it was just, I just ran all the time. And I think I'd be able to squat. Just like that's like equivalent to the word fitness for so many people. It's just like, go run. <laughs> right, right. I think it has to do with a lot of education of fitness. And, you know, you still talk to people who aren't really as into it as we are. And you're like, well, I count my macros. And they're like, what's a macro? <laughs> You know, definitely. So we, what advice? So now that we've kind of talked about that, there are a lot of other aspiring women athletes out there, and 
you know, people who really look up to kind of the big leap that you took. So if you had any advice for women who want to get into the sport or who are already into the sport and looking to take that next step, um, what, what advice do you have for them? Um, I basically did everything really backwards. <laughs> I, started li- I started lifting way too heavy too fast because it's kind of like uh, the serious athlete that walks in the CrossFit gym and gets wrapped over their first day. That was kind of my <laughs> journey of weightlifting. Awesome. <laughs> uh, being naturally athletic and strong, I, I was lifting weights I was not ready for. I didn't have the mobility for. I didn't have the critique on my technique. I had very terrible technique for a very long time and there was no one that ever told me like stick to the basics for a long time and make sure your body is primed and ready with the mobility you need and then the weights will come afterward and I know it's like cliche a lot of people say that but the more you can focus on the little details first the weights later will come so much easier and so with lifters that are wanting to make this more of their full-time gig, I would say the better you get at the basics right when you first start doing that, the more success you're going to have later. And I also make sure you're doing it for the right reasons because I know some lifters like that start their own clothing company or start thinking of this in dollar signs usually are the ones that fall on their face with it because everything in this community is fueled by passion and if you're not doing it because you love it it's it's not going to work out because people people have to buy into what you do and want to like emulate you and if you're not loving what you're doing it's so obvious so that'd be my biggest advice just make sure whatever your path you're going down is you're truly in love with what you're doing and that that's actually a really awesome answer and yeah you know I guess to add on to that there's nothing wrong with not becoming a professional weightlifter if you love it you love it and that's what you do but if especially for women who are looking up to especially people like you athletes you know it's okay to not be a professional you know if you just do it for the love none of this that I've done I I didn't like set out to do like I never said I want to go to nationals for weightlifting. I never said I want medals. I never I never wanted any of this. It's all kind of been a byproduct of I get to go to the gym every day and do what I love to do. And it's just kind of snowballed into now I'm at the level I'm at kind of by accident because I just pursued what I like doing and what gives me stress relief, what gives me a chance to make new friends, yada, yada, yada. That's so inspiring. I love that. That's awesome. That's about as real as it gets. Yes. Um, so you might have already answered this um, in your in your other in the other question, but um, is there anything that you know now that you wished that you knew when you first started lifting? And that could be anything from lifting or business or just like general, like man, I wish I would have known X. Um. Well, I like I said, I kind of did everything backwards, and one of the things that I really learned. A lot from was cutting weight too many times and I am big on not letting my clients do that because mm-hmm. if I had only cut to 58 for say one huge meet and then properly gained back some weight and then done it again like six months later I probably could still be a 58 and my numbers would be a little bit more competitive but when you cut weight too many times too close together it's really hard to keep your hormones stable and feel good in training and continue to get strong. Okay. And so that would be some big advice I would give to newer lifters is not to cut too many times. That's huge because I see people do that all the time. And it's, I don't think there's not a lot of people just are trying to do this stuff on their own. And there's not a lot of resources that tell them like, um, you're really going to mess yourself up if <laughs> you do this yeah. too many times. Yeah, I wish told me that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think that's the, it's kind of a trend with women too. Um, we're just kind of bred and ingrained in our brains that we need to be smaller, you know, when we're smaller. You never really talk to a woman and you say, well, what are your goals? And hardly any of them will say, 
oh, I'd like to move up a weight class or I'd like to gain muscle. I mean, it's becoming more and more of a thing, but especially, you know, three, even three years ago, you talk to a woman, they're like, well, I'm trying this diet. It's, it's like the world is ingrained in our brain for women to be small. And, you know, so we are constantly dieting. I feel like a lot of women are constantly in a dieting state, whether mm -hmm. we mean to be or not. Just yeah, and it's exciting. really hard to find your weight class too, and I think it takes some practice. Like even now, if I had enough cut the wrong way or too many times, 58 is not the class for me because my body naturally wants to put on muscle, and it's just not going to work. I would have to be skinny all the time to be a 58, and skinny and weightlifting don't go hand in hand. No. So it's like really hard to... Uh, get that mindset into a lot of people so I think it's really awesome when I have a client come to me and it's like help me put on new muscle help me fill out my class like I love that because they've got like the weight on the bar as priority over weight on their body and I think that's awesome and it probably I mean it probably goes hand in hand right once once you get them to fill out their weight class you know even if they wanted to cut like it's so much easier because they're in the mindset right. of I just want to lift yeah for sure that's awesome. That's awesome. Is there anything else you want to add to this? Anything special? Um, I really like what you guys are doing. I think it's going to be awesome. I think it's a great idea. I love that it's two chicks. Uh, most podcasts are dudes. dudes. <laughs> yeah. So I love that y'all are putting yourselves out there and going to get this started. So I just think it's great. Well, we're Thanks. super excited to have you on as our OG um, interviewer. This is, it's spectacular, actually. Very, very exciting. We're a little giddy. We're a little giddy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, um, thank you for being on today. We really appreciate it. Oh, you're uh, welcome. Visit Kristen Pope on Instagram and YouTube. Links will be in our show notes. And also visit her website at barbellsandbows.net. If you like what you heard today, please help us connect with other female badasses. Um, we would love if you would leave us a review on iTunes, tell your friends about us, um, visit our website, which is empoweredbyiron.com. Um, you can find each of us on Instagram. Mary is at marymo underscore 92, and Kristen is at Kristen with an I, Lander. Um, future topics will include nutrition, programming and training, mental health, and just general female badassery. Yeah, so let us know what you want to hear. If you have any input, that'd be awesome. Um, and guys, this is Empowered by Iron is, we want it to be a resource and an outlet for women who are finding their confidence, their independence, and their strength through iron. So thank you for listening. Thank you for checking in, and until next time, I'm Mary, I'm Kristen, and this is Empowered by Iron.